epidemiological studies, what's their need and what are the different designs which we can use to conduct epidemiological studies. Uh, we have seen in an earlier session that we need to calculate rates, ratios and proportions for different parameters. The next step would be to have a comparison of these parameters in different populations. To have a comparison of the parameters in populations who have a particular disease or who don't have the disease. And to achieve this, we need to scientifically conduct epidemiological studies. There are various varieties of epidemiological studies depending on what we are trying to assess. Now, sometimes we just need to study a disease in terms of where it occurs, how many people are affected and where is the area where people are being affected. So in other words, we may have to conduct a study wherein we are looking at a description of time, place and person distribution. There would be necessity to find out what is the cause of a disease. For example, if 40 people who ate at a restaurant are suffering from diarrhea and vomiting, we may have to find out the culprit, the actual cause of the food poisoning or the foodborne illness. So we may have to look at what were the food items consumed by people who ate at the restaurant. We may also have to look at those people who ate at the restaurant but did not fall sick and we may have to compare these two groups the ones who were diseased and the ones who were not diseased after eating at the restaurant so in other words we are trying to find out what is the cause of the disease studies are also designed to find out what is the natural history of the disease by natural history what i mean is how a disease starts gets initiated and how it progresses in an individual is known as natural history of the disease. And natural history is studied without doing any intervention or we do not try to change the course of the disease either by giving treatment in the form of drugs or by giving vaccinations or by trying to control the disease. So that's what I mean by natural history of the disease. Studies may also have to be done to test preventive strategies in populations. So we, if we have to introduce a new vaccine for a given disease, we may have to test it in certain populations. And with the help of epidemiological studies, we can achieve this. So these are basically the reasons why we need to design epidemiological studies. Now from here, I come to a point wherein we need to look at what are the different types of epidemiological study designs which are used? Now before going on to the actual study designs, I would just like to emphasize here that the type of study design which we would like to use for our study depends on three factors. And three factors are, the first one is the type of disease you want to study or the extent of the disease you want to study. Second, whether how much of resources you have to conduct the study. And thirdly, what is the purpose of your study or what is the research question you want to study. So, depending on answers to these questions, the study design should be designed. Okay. Now, let's move on and lo let's look at the basic classification of epidemiological study designs. So epidemiological study designs can be classified in many different ways. Today I am going to talk about uh, the most simple way which I feel is very simple to understand. So uh, we look at it from the point of how we study a disease. Whether we study a disease just by observation or whether we study a disease by making a change or what we call as intervention. So the two basic types of study designs are observational and experimental or interventional. So sometimes people call them as non-experimental and experimental study designs. But whatever name is given, the most simple form according to me to remember is observational and interventional studies. Now, under observational studies, we have two separate categories again. Now, what are these two separate categories? 
in observational study designs we can have either a descriptive variety or we can have an analytical variety of a study design now what do i mean by this let's look at what is a descriptive study design when we talk about a descriptive study design we describe the disease in terms of as i said earlier time place and person so we are talking about how the disease affects a particular population in a given geographic region and what's the time which is specified during which these diseases occur now the best example of descriptive epidemiology was given by sir john snow the father of epidemiology who with the help of a spot map tried to prove that cholera is a water borne illness long before the um long before it was found that vibrio cholera is the causative agent for cholera so with the help of a spot map which showed the number of cases of the illness it showed the area where it had occurred and it showed the distribution of the population uh, which had consumed the contaminated water which showed us that cholera is a water borne illness so with the help of such descriptive studies we can know the distribution of the disease and descriptive studies form the basis on which we can carry out further studies or in other words we can conduct analytical studies based on findings of descriptive studies now what are the examples which we can consider as examples of descriptive studies the basic types of descriptive studies are what we call as cross sectional studies or also known as cross sectional surveys the other type is a case report and the third variety is a case series now what are all these cross sectional surveys the meaning of the word cross section is uh, if we consider a cake and we cut a triangular piece of the cake we consider it as a cross section similarly when we consider uh, a population study of which is of the cross sectional variety we are trying to study the whole population by taking a small chunk of the population or surveying a sample from that population which is representative of that population so what happens is the findings or the results of the study subjects which have been selected from the population can be generalized or applied to the population so this is what is known as cross sectional surveys now cross sectional surveys are done when time is short when we have very less resources they are very quick they are relatively cheaper and easy to conduct as compared to other studies and it gives us a, an idea about the health status of the population within minutes so cross sectional surveys are also known as uh, studies which take a snapshot of the population and we get the measurements from that survey now what is a case report uh, more in most of the clinical settings there will be a report about an interesting case or a case which has presented in a different uh, manner or different symptoms which is narrated in a descriptive format and it is published in an article or uh, in a journal so that's what is known as a case report case series is nothing but when a report of several cases with similar presentations is made as a single report it is known as a case series so as we saw all the three examples of descriptive studies um in this particular session uh, reflect on describing the particular illness or the disease or the health status of the population so it's description so from descriptive studies we can get an idea as to what is happening with the population as i said earlier they form the basis of the next type of studies that are analytical studies now today's session we are just going to look at the names of these analytical studies and the names of the experimental studies the rest of it we will be discussing in the next session so the the examples of analytical studies are case control and cohort studies these are the two basic types of analytical study designs now some people or would also say that cross sectional surveys can also be analytical in nature and yes that's true we can convert a cross sectional survey of a descriptive nature into an analytical one based on the findings to check whether there is a relationship between a factor and the disease which is being studied so that's what i mean by 
analytical cross sectional surveys but the basic types of study designs when we talk about analytical studies are case control studies and cohort studies now there is a difference in these two and we will look at them in the next session let's move on to what are interventional or experimental study designs as the word suggests intervention that means the the investigator or the the person who is conducting the study would do an intervention or a deliberate action in order to change the course of the disease and to check whether that intervention works or doesn't work um in epidemiology the gold standard for experimental studies is considered to be rcts that is randomized controlled trials now these are trials which are done with different groups of populations to study the effect of maybe um, a drug or a treatment or a therapy at the community level or from the prevention point of view we have vaccine trials or community trials or field trials which are done on populations within the community to study the effectiveness of a new intervention like maybe a vaccine or a new health education campaign or a new health education material so these are basically the examples of experimental study designs in a nutshell what we saw today is epidemiological study designs can be of two basic types observational and interventional under observational we have the descriptive and the analytical studies and in the interventional we have either randomized controlled trials or community trials or field trials we will look at the analytical study designs in the next session till then keep watching and do subscribe to my channel thank you very much see ya bye bye